So, welcome back. As promised, this next episode of my casual let's play of Homeworld Cataclysm comes a bit faster than the last time. So, we're docking our working ship here and go finally into the hyper jump. We need to end the mission here and then we'll get right on with mission 5 or as I call it, story time. So, what will happen? Well, you'll see. And hyperdrop. Eintragung 1.2. Mein Team ist an Bord der Kuhn Lahn und bereitet eine Untersuchung des fremden Artefakts vor, dessen Überreste in Sektor 112 gefunden wurden. Wir haben unsere Ausrüstung im Hangar installiert und führen eine Oberflächenanalyse durch, bevor wir die Kapsel öffnen, die wohl eine Art Funkfeuer oder Sendestation ist. Die Übertragung besteht aus einem sich wiederholenden kurzen Ton, an dem fremdartige Datensequenzen gekoppelt sind. Es wird viel Zeit und Rechenarbeit kosten, diese Signale zu entschlüsseln. In der Zwischenzeit setzen wir die Untersuchung der Außenhülle fort. Wir haben Proben entnommen, die auf ein Alter von ungefähr einer Million Higara-Jahren hindeuten. Ein Teil der Sonde scheint organischer Natur zu sein, aber das wurde noch nicht bestätigt. Die Untersuchung wird fortgesetzt. Modul, hier Brücke. Wir registrieren Energieschwankungen in Ihrer Abteilung und den Hangars. Nicht Nicht die Brücke. Brücke. Ich will mal nach. Was war das? Was ist da unten los? Energieschwankungen jetzt auch beim unteren Triebwerkmodul. Äh, keine Ahnung. Der Augenblick. Wir haben Oberflächenproben der fremden Sonde Was untersucht. Ist los? Und jetzt haben wir Bioalarm auf allen unteren Decks. Was haben Sie gemacht? Irgendetwas geht hier um. Es tötet uns. Wir müssen das restliche Schiff retten. Sprengen Sie die unteren Decks ab. Karak stehen zwei. Brücke an alle Abteilungen. Notabsprengprogramm aktiviert. Sprengen Sie uns ab. Deep Space Tel Sector. Well, looks like that research could have gone better. Now, <coughs> this marks the end of the cool LAN as a mining ship. Even the old Hanja module is destroyed and we have to build a new one, looking slightly different. Now from this point on, you can't really think of the Kuhnlan as a mining ship anymore. Well, it can still mine stuff thanks to its working ships, but the last mining part of the command ship is essentially gone, except for collecting resources like even a carrier could, or a, a carrier could do. So what is essentially happening here? Our little mining clan, the Somtaf, are now offi officially a warrior clan, a soldier clan. Of course, they don't know it yet. They're still thinking they can still keep on mining after they find out what kind of catastrophe just happened. But since the game won't end in mission number 5, out of 16 I think, we can, uh, I think, bet on 
this not happening. Those miners are in for another dose of bad luck. A nice little graphical gimmick is you can actually look at larger ships and modules being built like this. They just phase in into existence. I like to pretend it's because of nanomachines. And as soon as building is finished, the module suddenly is finished too. Now we are supposed to use the Klee Sun to investigate our old Hanja module and we are supposed to send our fighters with it. Now if you play this mission for the first time you would be excused for actually doing this right away without really thinking about it. What I'm doing instead is trying to just attach the fighters with the last, uh, the least experience because, okay let's face it, even if you're playing the first time through this mission you can see a, a sci-fi horror cliche if you see one. So you know what will happen to the units you send with the Klesan, right? Right. And now our fleet command will continue to annoy us as long as we are haven't sent enough ships. But now I finally remember that I can spool this up a little bit faster. So, and this is essentially what we're doing for the mission. Hearing story, sending ships to our uh, to, to the Tsart and Doom, and collect resources. And that's it really. A nice thing to do is using the time you get here to collect as many resources as you can because as soon as the Klesan is on the ray, the shit will hit the fan and the fan will explode. So, problem is... Yes, I know, we have not sent enough fighters over. Now it turns out we don't even have enough Vassal fighter fighters, so we need more. And so I slowly build one after another trying to get the exact minimum number of fighters I have to send. And while I'm doing this, we can get a look at the system manager again and marvel at the number of fighters and corvettes our mother ship can hold. And also, you will have noticed there are exactly two slots empty next to the Kunlan. Now you can guess how many carriers we can attach to our fleet. And if you guess something else than two, then I don't know what I have to tell you. Except for some dumb jokes about your stupidity, I guess. You're missing intellect and... Ah, I'm digging myself a di uh, deeper here. I'll just stop and pretend I never started this line of what. So, you can have two carriers in your fleet. Three if you, ca uh, if you call the mothership your third carrier. And every carrier you attach gives you more ship units, so you can have a larger fleet. And we get still this stupid annoying message. Not enough ships! We need more ships to protect the Klesan! Yeah, a bit faster please. So, is that enough? Nine... Nine Vassal fighters. Let me guess. Nope. Nine is not enough. And now we are g got the message that nope, no resources here. And we learn something new in this measure, message, uh, in this mission, mission, God, we learn something new in this mission. Ah, my English gets worse instead of better. That's good. That's good. And this new is 
to smear a message about we found nothing in this explored um stuff we found nothing in this explored region this exactly means what it's telling you because if you look in the sensor manager you will see you also have a passive region you can look at that's the wireframe around all those point, points and blips and blue globes and what is happening here is your worker ships can automatically find all resources inside those wireframes but if the mission is large enough they'll sometimes have resources just outside or far outside this wireframe region. So you have to actually move units f farther away from your entry point in the mission to expand the region to this new globs of resources. So while I'm saving, luckily this isn't too confusing because in the sensor manager if there is something to find like asteroid belts or something you can still see it you just have to fly close enough so the sensors of your worker ships can actually find this, those resources now we have sensor blips up north to this asteroid belt and as you can see yes there are still asteroids to mine but those asteroids are actually outside of our little wireframe cube. So I'm moving my mother ship closer to those resources just so to get the passive scan region to expand and to get those juicy resources. Also for no reason at all I bomb building new fighters. It's remarkably as if I expect to lose the other ones because at this point 16 fighters would be quite the overkill since I need three ship points sooner or later for my first capitals but that's still in the future. Yeah, asteroids are here. He can get those resources. So back to experience for something else now. You may have noticed the Kuren Lan has two large stars for experience. Well, an interesting point to note is if you lose a mission and restart it because you got your stupid ass blown up then the experience will be gone too. But if you are smart and save often and reload after you got blown up then of course you will, can, will still have the experience on your mothership. An important thing to remem remember. because the game automatically saves at the start of the mission but what it actually does is well, making the new mission and saying here you can start here instead of in the beginning so what happened? this looks ugly the funny thing is as you can see our old Hanja module is actually already marked as enemy and I could theoretically just attack it. We won't do much damage just with fighters but it would be funny if we already had larger ships. Of course it would even be even more funny for what just will happen soon after. Here I'll try to find out what happens if I actually do attack my own Hanja module instead of waiting. And missiles go. Yeah, and just ignore the fighters attacking.
Achtung! Wir haben jeden Kontakt zur Plesang und ihren Begleitschiffen verloren. Es gibt nur noch schwache oder gar keine Lebenszeichen von unseren Schiffen. Aber sie fliegen weiterhin feuerbereit auf Angriffskurs in unsere Richtung. Was auch immer im Forschungsmodul passiert ist, es muss sich auf die anderen Schiffe übertragen haben. Wir haben keine andere Wahl. Wir müssen sie als Feinde behandeln. Lassen Sie ein Forschungsteam die Wände analysieren und halten Sie sich um jeden Preis vom Forschungsmodul fern. Ah, wow. Und sie sind schon da. Okay, diese Cutscene. Well, this Cutscene gave me honest to God, to God nightmares when I was a child. It's still strong enough, I just slipped back into German instead of using English. Sorry for that. But now we can actually research what happened. Well, because... We just got our ships infected by a particle gun, a particle ray gun, and because this is kind of strange, our scientists really want to know what happened. Luckily, Kunlan is still good enough to destroy fighters and other small fry. But as you can see, in a, and I mentioned last episode, if you line your own ships up like this, during an enemy attack, then yeah, you take heavy losses right away. The bad part, of course, is what I'm doing right now, trying to dox him again. It's the worst possible thing I could do, because I will take a half an eternity to actually dock, with more enemy units approaching. Shit. Well, look, uh, our old, looks like our old Hanja Madul has also started producing units. Well, fuck. Looks like a real horror show is about to begin. So again, theoretically, we could just build fighters and corvettes to try to destroy the enemy um, carrier, I guess. It's not really a module anymore. But trouble with this is, not only will you be showered with units, even if you somehow get the upper hand, you still have the problem that you're completely defenseless against this infection ray. So you have to stay the fuck away from your old Hanja module. And at the same time you have to defend your own ship, especially your research modules. Because if you lose them, you can't research shit. And then of course you'll fail the mission as long as you can't rebuild it fast enough and start researching again. This is another point I should mention. Large ships like the Kun Lan won't only be destroyed by just losing all their HP like some kind of a Japanese role-playing character. Instead what can happen is if an enemy concentrates fire on the single modules like the Hanja module or the research modules then they can actually destroy those modules one by one, not only damaging your ship, but also essentially stealing your facilities, making it impossible to do things. Losing your Hanja module makes your fleet smaller, and lo losing your research modules prevents you from researching stuff. That's it, essentially. Important to see is our old Hanja module was incredibly fast and has built an, an entire fleet of working ships, which is kind of bad. But as a reminder, even so I actually succeed in destroying all those worker ships, just a few minutes later they will already be replaced. And what I'm doing right now Looks fancy, yes, we are destroying a lot of shit and stuff, but overall it doesn't actually influence the outcome of the mission. You can stay here for hours and destroy units and the only thing you will get out of it is zero resources and the Kuhnland blowing up. 
So what exactly are we supposed to do in this mission? Well, as I said last time, you're supposed to listen to the story, which you should because those cutscenes are really good. Really. I'm not even annoyed or disappointed with the sometimes wonky um what was it dubbing or subbing? Subbing, subtitle, a uh, dubbing with the sometimes wonky dubbing, simply because the atmosphere overall is still great. And hey, if you're an adult, uh, you just say, hey, neat, and that was it. But if you're still a child and this is your first RTS ever, then this sh some strong emotions you will get. So blow up whatever you are. Copy ship. So right now we still now inject shit. So the rest of the mission is essentially rating, looking at cutscenes and protecting the Kunlan in the meantime. The only way to lose is to sit back and do nothing here. As long as the Kunlan is safe, everything is okay. So now we know the, this particle ray actually sends particles to us and those particles turn out to be biomechanical virus or viral viri what is the plural virus shit I have to look that up Did that asshole just call us moles? Yes, he did. Because he is an asshole. <sighs> Sadly, that asshole doesn't know what he's getting himself into. So all those pirates and the Imperial heavy cruiser arriving at the scene will have a dire fate. This isn't a spoiler because, well, what did you expect to happen? The Imperial cruiser actually being successful at this point? Nope. Because the Imperials and the Pirates aren't the real enemy, as you may have guessed from that last impressive cutscene of a biomechanical virus running amok on our ship. So, back to technology. Interesting and kind of hard sci-fi like, even, this particular ray gun actually codes targeted ships with those biomechanical virus things and those weird half half alive half technological nanomachines then infiltrate technology and even living organisms and then kind of fuse them together but there will be an entire cutscene explaining this uh, uh explaining on german uh, i guess then it's not too bad if i jump ahead a little bit. So, and this research actually had a, an in-game reason, because now we can actually slow down the infection rate by polarizing our hulls. So, essentially we're using, we're using fancy little electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic principles to repel the electrically charged infection organism. This is actually kind of a neat idea, I think. Using simple physics to explain stuff like this is always neat. Of course, this only adds to the horror because it makes it a lot more... It 
makes it seem as if this could actually happen. An ancient artifact is found, and then something in between a virus and a nanomachine starts infecting people and machines alike and just kind of fusing them together to a huge mess. Sounds horrible, and when it's explained with normal, understandable physics, it sounds even more horrible because it sounds more real. So, but right now we still can't fight our old um, ship parts, I guess. There aren't any people on it anymore. And we have gained at least a little bit of experience from our command ship, but... Well, we ca still can't find them because... Fight them. Because... Oh, shit. Cutscene. Man, those poor, poor bastards. Well, the Imperials and the Pirates fucked up so bad, not only got the enemy fleet ten times as dangerous now, thanks to having frigates and heavy fr and then heavy cruiser to boot, it was bad enough our fleet command actually called them idiots. And now, well, we make an emergency hyperjump after everything is safely docked. And this is essentially the end of the mission. So, I'm logging myself out here, and you can stay back and enjoy the cutscene. Oh yeah, welcome to Iowa. That's will be a nice title for the next episode, I think. <laughs> what the hell are the Bentusi? I'm joking, I'm joking. But we'll look at this next time. So, goodbye.